Alright guys, let's recap do's and don'ts for item specifics and for our descriptions. A lot of times we're overthinking a lot of the information we put in and that takes time and time is precious to all of us. So let's figure out what we actually do need and what eBay doesn't require, buyers don't want to see and we can avoid putting it in our item specifics or descriptions and therefore save some time. So there's been a lot of talk, um, hearsay really, where people give different advice. Do this, do that, this will make your sales faster, this will help you sell more. And a lot of that stuff are just opinions that either A, people just wanna feel important and they give them to you, B, they were misinformed and they have no idea what they're talking about. And so whenever, you are trying to take an idea and implement it into your own business, it's probably best to check with the source, which in our case is eBay themselves. Um, eBay customer service improved tremendously. From being with eBay over the past nine years, um, we went through Customer service for buyers only, customer service really good for sellers, customer service back to buyers. Um, eBay improved it so much, they are really, really good now. If they don't know the answer to your questions, I had a ton of times where they would say, we're going to figure it out. And they would call me back within one to two days and they will have the solution. So don't be afraid to call them and ask and verify everything before you just blindly start adjusting your listings in hopes that it's going to make something good for you because it may not hurt you but it may waste your time i've been told multiple times that with item specifics you want to put in as much as possible you want to create all those special fields add your own item specifics, and that is all not true. So before I made this video, I had a list of myths that I myself been questioning over the years. Um, I have multiple stores, and so I am able to test some things. I am able to do minor adjustments here and there, and then see what they actually do to my sales in the long run. And a lot of those things that people say, eBay told me so, you have to do this, and then I would do it, and nothing would happen, or it would actually hurt my sales, and I thought, you know what, enough. Before I put out another video about item specifics and descriptions, I'm actually going to call because I have an anchor store, and I'm going to talk to an eBay representative. And so I did, and I had a list of a few ifies that I wanted to ask them, and I got my answers and I hung up and I waited about two hours while I was listening and then I called back and got a different representative and asked him exact same questions <laughs> because you know I just wanted to make sure that they were all on the same page and let me tell you they were uh, the answers were very similar to each other so with item specifics do not try to change them to fit you if eBay says color and the drop down menu says orange, pick orange, do not overwrite it and put tangerine or salmon. That is your opinion. You might be super good at shades, but at the end of the day, it is orange. If your customer emails you and asks what shade that is, which will be really rarely, then it's up to you. But eBay server is not going to look for tangerine and it's not going to look for salmon. I've been told this by multiple people at eBay today. So your options are what the drop down says. Do not delete it and type your own. You're just hurting yourself. Uh, the whole point of item specifics is to give yourself a chance to be found. Therefore, algorithm knows specific words that it's looking for. In the color range, there is no salmon, so don't try to help eBay or your buyer by adding your own. 
EBA is also very clear on what fields they want you to fill out. Without, if you skip them, you won't be able to list your item. It's just going to have it in red. So make sure those are picked, all of them. But I've been told many times that if you have any additional information, just create your own fields. Well, that is no longer the case. You don't have to go crazy and overload item specifics with bunch of fields that you have created yourself. So at the end of the day, do not overthink item specifics. Whatever category you have chosen to put your item in, eBay will automatically show you what item specifics they want you to fill. Based on the drop down menus, just pick what you're asked. It's like a questionnaire. They ask you questions, you answer them. Nothing else is required. Do not spend extra minutes trying to come up with your own description for that item that you're going to create item specifics for. That is not necessary. Now let's talk about descriptions. There are certain things you should do and there are certain things that you shouldn't do. I am also guilty of this because I have put out a video uh, almost a year ago. Did you know that I started the YouTube channel in February of this year? And well, it's December, so in a couple of months I'll be here a year. Woohoo! Um, I haven't been very consistent in the past, but I'm changing that. This is the third video this week. Um, so I committed myself to five, right? But only three happened, but this is still improvement. I do have a lot going on business-wise and family-wise. I am a mom. I have to be with my kids. Um, I also have stuff to run down here. So I am working. I'm working on it. You might be only getting three videos a week from me, but hey, <laughs> that's better than once every two months, right? But I do enjoy... Talking to you guys, I enjoy reading your comments. I am making this a regular thing, and I'm going to tell myself that I'm going to do five, which means I'm really going to do three. But anyway, back to description. So, one of my old videos, if you look at it from probably February, I'm not, I don't remember for sure when I put it out. Um, but I have showed the form old style man. where we would say brand, uh, two dots space and then we would write the brand and then we would say style two dots and then we would write style and we were basically copying the um, everything that was in item specific into our description well i'm not sure if the lady that was so in with ebay was wrong or if ebay has changed their standards but as of this morning when i talked to them they said that that is not necessary now, the computer still likes it because I guess that's the code that the computer talks into. But it is not necessary that at this point they perfected the system that it's smart enough to pick up what you did in item specific. In fact, they told me not to repeat the information. Um, and they said, actually, if we go into help section, which I have not looked, but I do believe them, <laughs> um, that it is in there. So you're not supposed to repeat the information. So do not take your title and then repeat it in item specifics. Or <clears throat> we actually like to do it the other way. We would like to, we like to put blue in the title, which we're not supposed to. It belongs in item specifics. And we don't need to be putting that into the body of the description. So eBay tells us uh, in print not to repeat the information from one section to another. So in your description, um, all the important things that you want to be picked up about your item by Google and by eBay has to come into front. So whatever you want to say about your item has to be in the front. In the form of sentences, and it could be like you're writing a paragraph. So it no longer has to look like, like you're filling out a survey and you're just stating the answer to every question. It could be a flowy paragraph. Um, you do want to give details. Now, eBay is a very visual site. A lot of times, buyers will not even look 
um, at your description. They looked at the pictures and they either love what they see or they don't. So if you have defects, flaws, any special detail you want to point out, it should all go into the pictures. eBay is giving you 12 pictures to use. And we will have a separate video on do's and don'ts with pictures and we will go over lighting kits and it's time to update. I did a video about pictures um, about a year ago, but things change all the time and you have to keep changing with it. eBay is a very visual site and most of your work should be shown through the pictures. That's what buyers see. However, you're not just writing your description for the buyer you're writing it for the search engines as well. And when somebody is shopping and they're putting in what they want, that portion, the first portion of the description, it's what computer service will look for to put your item in front of their eyes. And that is really what you want. So do not skip description. Descriptions are important. I also heard, and this is a hearsay, but they're saying that Google will skip a lot of listings if the description is too short because then Google sees it as incomplete and they don't want to give their buyer a bad experience. So anything that's incomplete will go on the bottom of the pile. So you do, it doesn't mean you have to write essays. And I did ask eBay today, do we have to um, write gazillion paragraphs? And no, they said you do not. But it, they don't want one sentences either. So you do have to describe your item the best you can. Another interesting thing they want is you should not be describing your item negatively. And I have talked about this in my yesterday video, the day before yesterday video, when I was talking about items, uh, titles. You want everything to sound appealing. So do not say humongous haul. On the left side of the dress, you're going to look ugly in it. That is, a, even though it's the truth, it's the negative way of saying that. But EBA wants you to write everything in a positive way. So even when you're describing your defect, just stick to facts and just say, hole underneath the left arm, please see the pictures for best description of the flaw on this item. Boom, you're done. Be honest, describe it, don't hide anything, but don't be a negative person when you're describing it either. eBay does not allow any pictures inside your description. No HTML codes. Uh, you're not supposed to have multiple fonts and very colorful descriptions. So don't be writing first line in blue, second line in green, third line in yellow. Yes, it might look very appealing to you. eBay doesn't like it. That is not what they prefer. You, It will hurt your standings. So make it very professional looking. No extra stuff. Your buyer doesn't care about it. You should not waste time on it eBay also does not want any unrelated information in your description, which is actually good for us. So nobody needs to be writing any essays. If information is not related to the item, it really doesn't need to be in there. Now, we all have our own little rules, like we feel like we need to tell the buyer even though the buyer will never read it, but it's going to make us feel good inside and for that purpose. Uh, type it up in a Word document and just copy and paste it to the bottom of each of your um, description. You could have a little paragraph about, you know, I will ship the same day if the payment is made by noon or... Um, if you want me to upgrade your shipping, please see that I have four different shipping options. And we, our next video is I'm going to show you how to write rules for shipping so you don't have to like pre-fill that stuff over and over. But no unnecessary stuff needs to go in the description. So, to recap, your item specifics, you're just simply choosing the drop-down menus that eBay already pre-selected for you based on the category you put your item in. Nothing extra is required. It should take you no more than 30 seconds. You simply fill out 
make a choice. You don't write anything. You simply make a choice of the answers that are already given to you. As far as your description go, do not make one line descriptions. Beef them up a little bit about the item. Do not write an essay. Don't put any unnecessary information in there. Try to stay positive when you're describing your item. Be honest. Don't lie. Don't hide anything. Just tell your buyer what it now is. Let's take a moment and actually take a look at what eBay considers a good description. Because remember how I said go to the source? Well, they did take all the guesswork from it for us. They updated it, they wrote it, it's in writing, it's in front of us, we just have to look for it. So let's see what the proper eBay approved, Cassini favored description looks like, shall we? So you logged into eBay and if you just go into help um, and just pick, you can even just type in writing a good title and description, this page will come up. And if you keep on scrolling, it's going to give you examples of what eBay thinks a good description is. Look at it. It's not 5 billion words in there. They are fairly short. This is it. This is what eBay thinks a good description is. Here is example number two, example number three, example number four. I'm not going to read this to you guys. And here, remember, that's my old. So they're still doing it. E this is still, you know, a thing. But it's not the only way. You are totally okay using some of this other stuff. Look. It all will come up. I'm not going to read you the descriptions because I want you to go and look this up yourself. Um... I'm really big on providing as much accurate information as I possibly can for you guys. And I really feel like if you actually take a moment and go take a look at this stuff on your own, it's going to get engraved in your head a little more. Plus, you're going to know where it is. And so every three months or so, when the new seller's update comes out, Please go and double check on this. See what changed. See what's new. See what eBay wants you to do differently now. But as of right now, it has to be clear. It is not very big. You don't need to write books or dissertations in this section. You just do what is required to describe what you are selling. And really, that is it. And if you stick to that format, and you do only what's asked of you and not just go out of your way and try to put a lot of unnecessary things into your item specifics and into your descriptions, it's really not going to take you hours to list, guys. So far, we have, what, 60 seconds for a title? At this point, 30 seconds for item specifics? Let's just say it's going to take you another minute. Let's just say two because you're really slow. It's going to take you two minutes to write that little paragraph about your item. You're at four minutes already. The next portion is really literally 10 seconds. We will go over it in the next video. And that is your entire listing. Uh, we will talk about pictures in a separate video as well. That is coming next week. And then I will sit down with you guys and we will list maybe 10 items in a row. How are you guys doing at the listing challenge? I am caught up up until Thursday. So today I'm still behind. Um, I will finish it maybe by tomorrow morning. I'm going to see, but I'm going to post my totals for you guys today. I had a lot going on, so I didn't really you noticed I haven't been on Instagram as much today as I want to. Um, we're still having our contest, so I posted... Monday and Tuesday winners under Monday video and Wednesday and Thursday winners are under my video about titles that's where they entered and then we will have today winner posted underneath this video so um, go ahead and make a comment with where you are where your progress is um, 
Let me know if you like this challenge, if you guys want to do more of them in the future. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and as always, leave me questions that you want me to answer in upcoming videos. And I will see you guys later.